Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the hydrogen and fuel cells here at the Hannover Messe 2023. Please all have a seat, have a drink. The hostesses are here to help you out, and we will have a lovely time. You're here at the technical forum where we dive into all of the little details of the hydrogen technology. We have a very interesting topic for you in store. We'll be talking about Accelera by Cummins' fourth generation of fuel cell solutions. Here with me from Accelera, the sales manager, fuel cell and hydrogen from Europe. Please welcome to the stage, Leo Stopper. Thank you. Thank you for joining me, Leo. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, yeah, great to be here. Thanks everyone for uh, joining me over here today. It's actually exciting. It's the first time uh, in Europe that we are presenting as Accelera. Last time we were at Hanover Messe, we were still called just Cummins. Now, as of February this year, we are rebranded as Accelera by Cummins. And um, today's topic is about fourth generation fuel cell solutions. I'll dive uh, a little deeper on that in the second part of the presentation, but I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, touch on Accelera, what Accelera is, and why we, why we changed our name. So yeah, let me introduce Accelera by comments to you um, by reading your mission statement. Uh, our mission is to accelerate the shift to net zero by pursuing the most promising path forward. And what that means in reality is what I show you on the next slide over here is that we are aiming to really cover the whole uh, ecosphere of hydrogen, but not only of hydrogen, but also of any other promising path forward, including battery systems, e-power trains, and traction systems. Let me start maybe with the production of, uh, of hydrogen, because we are very successful at the moment with our electrolyzer systems. That was uh, from the acquisition of a company called Hydrogenics uh, from Canada, um, same as our fuel cell systems. So that's the very left on the, on the very left side over there. You can see the electrolyzers and fuel cell systems. We do PEM electrolyzers. We do alkaline electrolyzers. And you can actually see that at our booth at D59 over there. And, and this is basically my part, we are doing fuel cell systems as well. Traditionally, and I will show that later, we, uh, we're doing a little smaller fuel cells, about 40 or 45 kilowatts. This is our current generation. And then our next uh, fuel cell generation we're going all the way up to 300 kilowatt systems to serve the heavy duty on high end truck market. Um, besides fuel cells, I want to mention as well that we are doing battery systems uh, through various acquisition, uh, acquisitions. We are having e power train systems with our most recent acquisition of uh, Meritor and also traction systems. Uh, as part of the Meritor acquisition from uh, Siemens Commercial Vehicles. So as you can see over here, all of our core technologies somewhat were um, laid um, down by acquisitions in the past. And um, why we did that is, uh, what, what is our point of difference, is the um, comprehensive, being a comprehensive system integrator. We are bringing it all together, uh, and we, we see that all as a necessity because the transition to zero emission requires a lot of knowledge, a lot of expertise, and we see that our, our customers, our OEMs, uh, uh, require support from us, and they require support from us from different angles. Can't only consult a customer at the end of the day only for, let's say, fuel cells. We need them to, uh, by helping them uh, in, for example, duty cycle analysis. We have a, a, a yeah, a location in California that helps us with duty cycle analysis and uh, vehicle system assessments. We have packaging assessments in the United States where uh, we can use resources to, uh, yeah, to do 3D modeling for them. Um, but we also do full powertrain and system controls, cooling system and thermal management, and last but not least, the, the big topic of uh, functional safety is also covered by us. And this is how we bring it all together. This is why we're covering so many different technologies. You see it down there. Uh, batteries, fuel cells, traction drives, and hydrogen storage. By the way, I didn't mention that earlier. Hydrogen storage um, is a joint venture from us. They are also over here at the um, Hanover Messe. They're called NPROX. They're also in the same hall over here. So I um, encourage you to visit them over there as well. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit of our global footprint. Um, I want to highlight specifically the European uh, locations. We have uh, our main location here in Germany for uh, the fuel cell businesses in Herten, Germany, which is close to Recklinghausen in a beautiful uh, Ruhrgebiet. 
Um, our electrolyzer business is located in Belgium, in Oeville. Um, besides that, we have various other locations, for example, in Nuremberg uh, with the electric motors, or in uh, Herland, in the Netherlands, with our NPROX uh, tank systems, for example. But you can see over here that we have a pretty global footprint by now, with through either just by Cummins itself or through all of our acquisitions uh, in North America, in Asia, but also you can see in Europe we have a pretty extend, uh, comprehensive footprint. Um, I wanted to show you that um, we are not doing brand new developments everywhere. We have had a long history of um, um, applications and some serious real-world experience. Um, you may be recognized in the fuel cell business, the blue trains over there. Um, we are actively, for example, also doing refuse trucks. Um, in the United States, Class A, uh, class a trucks, for example, or an e-ferry, for example, North America. So that was my, my little introduction of Accelera. Now I want to dive a little bit deeper into our fuel cell evolution. As I said earlier, we have traditionally been involved in uh, little smaller fuel cells, our HD30, for example, being a three, uh, 30 kilowatt fuel cell system, the HD40, 40 uh, kilowatt, and 45 with the HD45 over there. This is the generation three. This is the one that's currently in production and currently being deployed to various customers out there. And this is traditionally what we call fuel cell modules, meaning it came as the stack and in the front as with a balance of plant, but it didn't uh, have any further components. Um, now with our new generation of fuel cells, the generation four plus, which is coming out in about two years, we are introducing larger fuel cells. As I said earlier, we go up to 300 kilowatts now, but we'll also have a HD 150 um, or FCE 150 over here, 150 kilowatt fuel cell system. We actually have a model of that at our booth at D59 uh, to, to take a look at in real life uh, over there as well. And um, the reason why we go higher in power is um, that we are focusing, as I said earlier, the heavy-duty market. The heavy-duty truck market requires uh, power nodes about 300 kilowatts, but it also um, made us rethink the fuel cell um, as, a, as a whole, and we now call it a fuel cell engine by adding different components to it. You can see over here, checkmarked our DC-DC converter that now comes standard with our scope of supply with the fuel cells. And the thermal management system is also included, meaning thermal, uh, sorry, coolant pumps, um, thermostats, hosing, and all that stuff um, is all included in the scope of supply by standard and is um, supplied by us um, all from one hand to make it closer to a turnkey solution for our customers than ever before. Um, here's a little comparison again between the technology, what's different. It's not only the higher power, as you can see over here. We, we went from uh, 30, 45 kilowatts to 300, as I said earlier. Um, and I, I touched also on the topic that we are now doing uh, fuel cell engines, including DC, DC, and TMS. But maybe the more technical, the more significant part is that before that we were doing what's called low pressure fuel cells, meaning we only required a blower. And now, in order to get that higher power node, we are uh, requiring a compressor to compress the air into the fuel cell uh, to reach that higher uh, power density. It's actually pretty uh, impressive if you take a look at the unit, our standard D59, how compact the fuel cell is in relation to the power output of 150 kilowatts that we have over there. So I highly encourage you to, to visit us over there. Um, another thing is that uh, before we used a uh, technology, a patented technology by us called uh, internal humidification, meaning we were not using a humidifier. Um, by just using the internal process water and internally humidifying the system. Now that we are actually shifting our focus more to very high power nodes and higher um, operating temperatures, we are introducing also airside humidification technology to our fuel cells. And the main reason is in the line below that. Uh, it's obviously also the higher power node, but it's, it's mainly that we are really wanting to, to go to these higher coolant temperatures to make um, the, uh, the heat load lower that the customer at the end of the day needs to reject with expensive cooling systems. So going from 65 degrees with our current generation to 90 degrees Celsius is a huge leap in technology and it will offer a tremendous benefit in the end of the day to the application and to the customer. Because if you've seen applications in the past of uh, fuel cells, the um, 
the cooling system um, is a very large part of the application, and this gets dramatically reduced by increasing the temperature like that. And again, um, we are proud that we have actually a very compact and flat design. This is something that uh, um, maybe kind of sets us apart from other fuel cell solutions as well, is that we are building flat, um, meaning we are not only ideally suited for um, uh, putting our fuel cells into an engine bay, but also for roof applications, for example. That's very important. Well, that brings me already to the end. Thank you very much for having me over here. If you want to visit us, we are in this hall at booth D59. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leo, for your uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Do we have any questions from the audience? All right, so then I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, you were able to, to up the temperature that the fuel cell operates at mm -hmm. quite significantly. How were you able to do this? That is uh, mostly by technological advancements in the stack itself. But again, also the, the fact that we're introducing external humidification now. It really helps bringing these temperatures to, uh, to, these, to these levels, helping the customer at the end of the day. All right. And, and where do you see these, these fuel cells really taking off? Is it more in the heavy-duty uh, mobility? Yeah. Or do you also see a future in, in light-duty vehicles? What's, what's your opinion there? Yeah, th we, we clearly see as a, a target market for us the heavy-duty truck market but we see that other applications will uh, leverage and scale with that uh, market, uh, like other on-highway applications like bus, but also off-highway applications will benefit from the leverage that the on-high heavy-duty truck market will create. Very interesting. And then one, one final question for you as an American coming to the European market. German. Uh, <laughs> to the German market, <laughs> sorry. Uh, oh, you, you are a German yourself. Uh, yes. Ah, okay. But then, as an American company coming yeah. coming to Europe, how do you see the differences? Because I, I imagine there's quite a few differences in how people look at hydrogen and the hydrogen use cases between America and Europe. Yeah, certainly. I mean, there's a huge momentum uh, historically in Europe for hydrogen, just because of all the policies. But especially now in North America, um, uh, with the Re Inflation Reduction Act, for example, there's also a huge momentum in the market over there. So I wouldn't say that actually uh, there is a, a big difference in momentum in the, in the market. It's just that Europe maybe is a, a year or two ahead at the moment with uh, it's at least the hydrogen infrastructure. I mean, if you go outside of the door over here, you see the Shell station. We have, you can fill up your hydrogen car right now outside of here. I think this is pretty significant, yeah. Yeah, but it's great to hear that uh, the US is also catching up. Yeah. So if the people have more questions for you, where can they find you? Uh, at D59 in this hall over here. It's only a minute away, so D59. visit us. All right. Thank you very much, Leo. Thank you very much. Have a good day.